Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. Ah, yeah, you know what it is. Hard worker, scrappy, unfiltered, and sometimes unhinged football content. Hard to explain, but you know it when you see it. Doing it daily our way. I don't know what you're talking about right now. Redraft and Dynasty Fantasy Football, we got you covered. You know their defense is ranked like 31st in the NFL? NFL draft prospects and rookies? Now you know you in the right place for that. Absolutely. All right, then stop saying it. Then we're done. And prop bets with my man Jay Rich. Count that money, man. Now wipe the crust out of your eyes. Get you a cup of coffee. It's time to wake your ass up with Ray G. You honestly are making absolutely no sense and you sound silly as hell yes. you messed up the, just, God damn it we'll just, jordan just, get, I'm, get, I'm, stop, gonna, I'm gonna help leave, you leave me alone leave me alone jay i'm trying to talk to the people what's up barry fizzle your music was too loud my mic was too low i should be good now but go rings you're causing panic on the old dd youtube channel from uh all your trades so i don't know if you got to see the comments from the trade show uh, but go go check the YouTube channel, man. Uh, who else we got in the building? Josh in the building, Chris, Lewis. Yeah, Fizzle, man. We're going platinum over here. Lindsey Mack in the building. All right, all right, all right, all right. We good, we good, we good, we good. Calm down. I got it. I know what I'm doing. I'm a pro over here. I got, I got us covered, but it's going to be a good show. We got um, Dane Brugler. Got Dane Brugler's... Um, big board that was just released we're going to go through the fantasy relevant players from the big board we're not going to do any uh often uh any o linemen no d linemen nothing like that we're just going to go skill position players from a fantasy perspective uh we'll do that and we'll talk about some interesting some interesting big board rankings and slots that definitely are juxtaposed to what we're seeing right now uh, from the fantasy space. So it's probably going to be some players that you guys don't like, some players that you think are too low, too high, um, all that kind of stuff. But we'll talk through it. And, you know, what that kind of means for us as we approach the draft season. I was talking um, in my Patreon yesterday in the Discord about we're going to have a lot of information pop up here in the next, what, two weeks? Because the combine is right around the corner, I think like 13 days away uh, for the combine, less than two weeks. So, We'll get some official height, weight, speed, measurements on some of these players and really start to at least try to separate to some degree um, some of the tiers of these players for fantasy football. So got a lot of information coming, a lot of good stuff. Combine Pro Day is right around the corner. Get some official stuff. But um, it's interesting to see. He got a, he got a whole top 100. We're only going to look about look at a, maybe the top 50. I don't know how much time we'll have. I don't believe we'll get to get to everybody from – one to 100, but we'll talk about some of the notable omissions from his top 100 list. Um, a couple of running backs that we all love, we all like, that we think are going to be great, but they just, they have not, uh, uh, they're not popping up in a lot of top 100. So what's up, Patrick? How you doing? Lewis Hill says on NFL latest mock, they said Young was six foot. I hope so. I hope in so. In stilts, maybe. What, what'd you say, Jay? In stilts, maybe. Yeah, I don't know, man. He, Jay, Jay, you hear him in the background. Let's get him. Uh, let's get him in the screen. Shout out to uh, Prospects one more time. Use the promo code Wake Up. Uh, they are the official partners and sponsors with of this show. Use promo code Wake Up. First time depositors get an instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. And y'all know we got it right here. We got it cracking. Michelle Adoro Coffee. Go to MichelleAdoroUSA.com. Get fifteen percent off with the promo code Wake Up. Delicious, delicious coffee. I have it every morning. No BS. It's good stuff. So saw somebody on Twitter talking about good coffee brands, and no doubt in my mind, Michelle Adoro is that coffee brand. Jay, how you doing this morning? Uh, I know we got some news that we have to get to, but how are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. You know, uh, we we worked through our technical issues this morning, but I, I'm a little tired, but I'm happy to be on the show, man. Uh, I got my Michelle Adoro coffee with me, so I'll be good in no time. But some interesting news, not a ton of news, but I think a lot of discussion to be had about these particular news items. Uh, finally, all the head coaching vacancies are filled, so now we can start to project these offenses, right? With these quarterbacks going to new situations, who's going to fit in where, how do they fit in, and ultimately the biggest tr the biggest card in the in the free agency looming bucket is Lamar Jackson and what happens with him. Let's talk about it. The biggest news in the world of sports. Covered and brought to you by one man, Jordan Richards. This is Straight Facts presented by Michelle Adoro. 
All right, so as I mentioned, Jonathan Gannon was hired to be the Arizona Cardinals head coach, and Shane Steichen that we talked about on Monday was officially confirmed as the new Colts head coach. So all head coaching vacancies are filled, finally. Head coaches, done. We still have, I think, a couple of coordinator positions to fill, but most of them have been filled. But one of the interesting things about Steichen's press conference was two things, actually. Ursay was there, and we'll get to his comments in a second, but he said they're going to pass to score points, Ray, and they're going to run to win the game, which is just... Fantasy dream right there. But Ursa also talked about how they're going to be taking a quarterback. So, I mean, yep. no, nothing going on there. We fully expected that to happen. But now Ursa is confirming it. They brought in Sykem to come in and groom a young quarterback. Now, is that Bryce Young? Is he getting a little tongue in cheek there? Are they maybe trading up for the number one pick? We don't know. But yeah, Eagles go to the Super Bowl, lose their OC and DC. Chiefs go to the Super Bowl again, lose nobody. So make that make sense. But Either way, we'll see what happens with that offense and how they rebuild the offense and defensive side now with new coaches. I'm sure they'll be fine. As long as they have Sirianni, they have been. I think they'll be able to fill that void pretty well. But, Ray, do you have any thoughts on Sykem being the new head coach for the Colts? We'll see what Gannon does. I'm not as concerned with him for fantasy, how they build that offense. We'll see. But Ursay obviously saying they're going to take a QB. Which QB do you think he has in mind to take um, with with no that idea, fourth Jay. overall pick or the number one pick if they do trade up with Chicago? I have no idea. You don't know, man. Eh? No idea, man. No idea. It's going to be one of them, though. <laughs> so the other thing is we did get Derek Carr getting released yesterday. Um, I believe it was one day ahead of the deadline, which is actually today. And the interesting thing about Carr getting released is that he can actually sign with the team today if he wanted to his free agency starts today versus other pending free agents their free agency starts when the league year rolls over sometime i think it's mid-march like march 10th or something like that so it's interesting because there is this weird dead period where Carr could negotiate with teams potentially sign with teams before any other free agents have the possibility so the jimmy garoppolo's and some of the other pending free agents they can't actually sign until that league ultimately rolls over so we'll see if there is a fit for him we know that aaron Rodgers and Carr are both potential fits for the jets so we'll see who ultimately gets him we are waiting for aaron Rodgers to finish his darkness retreat which will be at the end of this week maybe we get some news on that over the weekend and as well ray big news out of baltimore the ravens have signed former georgia offensive coordinator todd munkin to be their new oc so the question is, is that is that a good fit for Lamar Jackson? And can that keep him in Baltimore? Because there was also reports that my, the Miami Dolphins may be interested in Lamar Jackson. Yeah. So where do you think this situation goes? Because we were waiting for this, the mm -hmm. OC for the Ravens to be announced. Todd Munkin, like you talked about, he turned Stetson Bennett into a Heisman caliber quarterback. So what the hell would he do with Lamar Jackson? Probably turn him into a three-time MVP, four-time Super Bowl MVP. Who knows? But how do you feel about the fit? I think it's a great hire for Baltimore. I mean, Todd Munkin is um he's he's done a good job at Georgia. Now, you know, Georgia has a lot of talent that other that NFL rosters don't, you know, that there's not that big of a talent gap in the NFL, yeah. right? Like everybody's kind of good. But uh, from an offensive mind standpoint, from a creative standpoint, this is a good fit. This is a it, this is a good hire for Baltimore. And whether it's Lamar Jackson or a different quarterback. Um, I, I think I think seeing a new version of the Baltimore Ravens could be a good thing. You know, they've <laughs> they've be sort nice, of right? been who they are. You know, run first team for a long time, even before even before Lamar Jackson. You go back to the Jamal Lewis days, and you know they wanted to ground and pound you. They built their team around a strong defense. That's just sort of been their cultural philosophy from an organizational standpoint. So while I don't think some of those things will change when you're in the AFC North and you have to deal with Joe Burrow and you have to deal with Deshaun Watson and you look across the AFC, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. I mean, you're going to have to score points. You're going to have to throw the ball. You're going to have to spread it out. So I think this is a breath of fresh air for Baltimore. Now, is that going to be Lamar Jackson under center or somebody else? You know, there was, I don't even want to call it a report, but I saw a tweet that, or one of the big name people said that Miami is potentially interested in Lamar Jackson, trading for Lamar Jackson, which that would be phenomenal. You get him down back to the crib and you give him Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill and, you know, what they want to do with that, with, with running the football. I think that'd be a phenomenal fit, but I do like the Todd Monken hire for Baltimore. So I'm excited to see who is under center for Baltimore moving forward in 2023. Hopefully it's Lamar Jackson. 
But right now, it just seems like that is going to be a little messy. So I like to hire. I like to hire. And, um, you know, hopefully th they figure it out because, you know, they're good players on that team that we like and we want for we want them to produce for us in fantasy. But overall, I like to hire. Uh, Jay, the Derek Carr thing, man, I, I saw we were talking about this last night. And, and y'all, patreon.com forward slash all gas. Get in the Discord. I'm telling you right now. We were having a conversation about Zach Wilson last night, and yeah. I can't recall a player being, I don't want to say hated, but just when you've got teammates openly lobbying for somebody else. Come, come here, Derek Carr. Come here. Derek, come here. Aaron Rodgers, come here. There's rumors that Ryan Tannehill, that there, that I saw something, Ryan Tannehill would be, a, or Derek Carr would be a significant upgrade over Zach. Jay. I know we like to say quarterbacks get second chances, right? They all all of the ones that got drafted high get second chances. I don't know about Dak Wilson, man. And, and I'm so pissed because I let you and other patrons talk me into this kid midway through the season. I let y'all talk pump through osmosis and y'all beat beat me down with the Zach Wilson stuff. I let y'all talk me into this. But here's the difference between Zach Wilson and Sam Darnold, who got another opportunity. The difference between Zach Wilson and Baker Mayfield, who got an opportunity. Like, those dudes weren't hated by the goddamn team, man. They weren't hated by their fan base. They weren't hated, right? They do not like Zach. I have not seen, even Josh Rosen, when he got replaced, he just stunk, right? He just stunk, you know, maybe he didn't put in the work. They can't stand this dude. I have not seen... People openly lobby for somebody other than the guy that's starting right now. This thing is, I just, for me, Jay, in my dynasty risk tolerance and appetite, I just don't want them, man. Jay, I don't want anything to do with them. I don't want anything to do with them. Maybe down the line, because what's going to, what has to happen? No team is going to be like, hey, man, we're going to bring you in. You're going to be our starter, Right. You got to win. Yeah. He lost the trust of the coaching staff. He lost the trust of the locker room. He lost the fan base. Like, what does that rehabilitation process have to look like for him to eat, for you to even warrant rostering him? Like, I don't want the dude, man. So I think he's closer to Baker Mayfield. You say he's not. I think the loudness. I don't think he's not close to Baker of, Mayfield at all. Uh, uh, no of, way. Of the, no I'm, way. But I'm saying. Hold on. I'm saying of the New York media. You're comparing the Cleveland media to the New York media. There are two very, 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 very different situations. I don't give you, I'm not talking about I'm no media. I'm talking about Zach Wilson. I get it, but you're saying he's hated. Baker Mayfield was hated. There was plenty of reports about Baker Mayfield being a bad teammate, being selfish, all these things. Those reports came out. Yes, the Panthers still took a chance on him. He ultimately had to rehabilitate his, re rehabilitate his image in L.A. this season, but I think that's kind of the path that he's on. Sam Darnold, I don't think was this hated by the fan base, but I, there's definitely a case to be made that he is probably the most hated high end quarterback in recent memory. Since Ryan for whatever Leaf. reason, since yeah, Ryan like Leaf. We, we don't know. And to be honest, right, I don't know what it comes from outside of his poor play. There is stuff about potentially you him don't being know a what bad it comes teammate. from. There was well, I'm just saying, like I get the play is bad, but I don't think I'm. I want to know do you what not else think there that is standing internally. up on a podium and telling well, reporters bad. that no. I'm not the reason. You don't know where it comes from? I'm just curious what else there is. I'm just curious because, like, there must be more stuff in, inside of there, right? But I'm curious what it is and how bad it really is. Because that was bad. We talked about how bad that was. But plenty of quarterbacks made mistakes before. He won't be the last one to do that. It happens. But I'm curious what else it is that's driven him this far. Because to be the most hated quarterback in America, that's a, it's not easy to do. But Zach Wilson found a way to do it pretty quickly. Don't you think though that someone will take a ta someone will take a chance no. on the talent? No. Someone someone you, someone no. will see that talent and they'll be no. like, we can we can make no. it. No. I think so. I, I I don't I don't understand how you're like, you don't understand what what else he did. He did enough. He stunk. I'm just curious what else he did. He took no accountability and he stunk some more. I mean, what I mean, that that's a big thing, Jay. That's a <laughs> to stand up there on the podium. But that was after all in all in one season, passes. though. We we talked about how he looked a lot better in the second half of of this first season, right? I get what you're saying, and he had that moment where he did some stupid shit. 
But, mm. you know, I'm curious what else there is. Derek Carr, Ryan, T I just, I'll pass on him, man. I, 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 I think things are going to go. I don't see a world that they are openly lobbying for somebody else to come in oh, and yeah. play quarterback. That's wild to me. That's e even if you don't think the guy is good, Cleveland never lobbied for like they the players weren't like, hey man, get anybody come here, anybody but Baker. Darnold was bad, but they weren't like anybody but Sam. They're they're literally anybody. Yeah. This is wild. This is wild. But um, enough Sam won talk. Some games though. What'd you say? Sam won some games though. He wasn't as bad as Sam, Wilson. Sam's a good kid. I like Sam. All right, Matt, uh, let's talk to uh, Dane Brugler from, from The Athletic. Uh, shout out to Dane Brugler, baby. Came out with a top 100. I highly encourage you. There's a link in the description. Go check out the entire article. Read his stuff uh, about all the 100 players. But we're only going to talk about uh, the, the skill guys from a fantasy perspective, and we'll see how many we can get to on this show. We've already pre-populated. We'll, we're, we're using a Draft Network's big board to kind of keep track of all of these players, so it'll be easy for you to kind of walk through and go back and watch it or whatever you want to do. Um, so let's just dive right in. And the top four players, uh, no surprise for, for a lot of people. Um, Bryce Young uh, is top-rated quarterback right now on his big board, followed by Bijan Robinson, C.J. Stroud, and Will Levis. Now, this is not the order in which they are um, listed in the top 100, but from a fantasy perspective, that's how we're doing it. Bryce Young is third on his big board. Bijan is sixth. CJ Stroud is seventh. And Will Levis is 10th. So those four players are top 10 in, um, in uh, what's his name? What Dane Brugler's uh, big, board. big board. Any, yeah. any shockers, any surprising names here? I know the community hates by the, by the day, Will Levis gets more and more hated, but this is uh this is uh, his top 10, top 10 guys. I, I think I'm a little surprised that Bryce is all the way up at three, but I mean, like, there's no, the, I guess I'm not surprised. I'm surprised by the fact that there's that much separation because you have uh, CJ all the way at seven and then Levis all the way at 10. I think for some analysts, it may be a lot closer, but I mean, Brugler hits on a lot of the points that we talk about. Bryce's only knock is his size. He has the pocket mobility. He has the vision. It's just, can he hold up long-term is really the only question for Bryce outside of that. He's literally the third best player in this draft class, and it's looking like Brugler would take him number one overall, um, where that's obviously not the case for a lot of other analysts. They are worried about the size. They'd rather take a CJ Stroud, a Levis, maybe even potentially an A-Rich. So that was a little bit surprising. Um, but outside of that, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, I talked about how much I love CJ Stroud. I think he's a great quarterback and, and a really good one for fantasy. Levis is the one that, you know, I think could be more polarizing, even at 10 um, on a big board on a NFL draft mock list. I think it makes sense. But on a big board, even at 10, I don't know if I would necessarily put him as a top 10 talent in the class, but I think I don't disagree with it overall. All right, let's move on to uh, the fifth player from a fantasy perspective and uh, 14th overall on Brugler's big board. And you know this makes me happy because I've been taking a lot of heat for how high I would personally take uh, this quarterback in Superflex. And he has Anthony Richardson as a top 15 player in this class. So A. Rich, uh, number five from a fantasy perspective, according to Dane Brugler, the quarterback out of Florida. It is what it is, man. He's big. He's fast. He's got a big arm. He's talented. Uh, you're not seeing, you're not hearing any negative things about his work ethic or or any of those things. Jay Rich is gone again. You're not hearing anything about that from Anthony Richardson. And I know, I, I get it. He hadn't played a lot. I understand all of that stuff. Uh, I get all of that. He hadn't played a ton. He hasn't done this. He hasn't done that. But this is the talent, right? This is what you, uh, this is what you bet on, the tools and traits for a, a young quarterback. So Anthony Richardson, according to Brugler, who has a lot of insider information, who does his work, who's one of the best in the business, A. Rich, 14th overall on his big board. Now, let's move on to the sixth highest rated player from a fantasy perspective on his big board. And I believe this is, yeah, this is the wide receiver one, according to him. And we're going to go out west to USC. Jordan Addison is number 20 overall on his big board, you know, smaller type wide receiver, dynamic, can play inside, outside, create separation on an instant. You play off coverage on him, he will he will thrive. You get up on him, that's where he struggles just a tad bit, but not enough to knock him down in any significant way. 
Jordan Addison, uh, top 20 player on Brugler's big board. Now, let's move to 21 and talk about the second-ranked running back, Jameer Gibbs. No surprise. Uh, dynamic, man. He's explosive. He's fast. I, I just, I hope and pray he lands on an offense that truly utilizes his skill set as a pass catcher. This is what we want for Jameer Gibbs. We want him to be utilized like Austin Eckler. I'm not saying he's at... That's not his comp. I'm not saying that's who his, his, his ceiling is. I'm saying the utilization of how Austin Eckler is used or was used in Los Angeles, it, that's what you want from Jameer Gibbs. You want him to be, you know, a 190 carry guy, but and also a running back that's going to get 100 plus targets. You give Jameer Gibbs that type of workload, that type of volume, he's going to smash for us in fantasy. So, I, I, I like Jameer Gibbs. I have him rated very high um, in my rankings right now. Film grades for my running backs are done. Patreon.com forward slash all gas to get those. We're breaking down Jackson Smith and Jigba tonight, starting the wide receiver stuff. And it's a good pivot to the second wide receiver and the first sort of uh, first sort of bombshell on the show. The second wide receiver and number eight from a fantasy perspective overall from Dane Brugler. We're going to go to the SEC and Jalen Hyatt is the name. So he's got Jalen Hyatt as his second wide receiver on his big board. And let, let me let me be clear. I don't want to say that's who he has ranked second. Maybe his big board is designed from a perspective of this is what he believes the NFL, how the NFL values him. So he values him there. I'm not going to call them his rankings. But Jalen Hyatt, from a fantasy perspective, according to Dane, would be the eighth highest rated player um, for fantasy purposes. So, Jay, I went through, you know, Addison, Gibbs, Hyatt. How you feeling about that cluster of three? I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, um, Jordan Reed came out a few days ago and was talking about how Jameer Gibbs is basically the clear RB2 in the class from a lot of people's perspective. And then the draft really starts at three. People are saying how deep this class is. It, it sounds like a lot of people, not just us, believe that Jameer Gibbs is that RB2 and will continue to be that but, I mean, you look at these receivers, I think you look at Jordan Addison and Jalen Hyatt, they're kind of like polar opposites in a lot of ways, right? You have Addison, Jaylen who's stats. the... Let's try you to look up Jalen stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, look up, you look up Addison, and you see a very polished route runner, smooth, and then you look at Hyatt, and Brugler literally said, if you're looking for a polished route runner who can uncover quickly, this is not your guy, but he's a dude that can stretch the field vertically and can force teams into bad situations and force them into tougher defenses tracking ability is great, reliable hands. That's what he loves about Hyatt. And I think in a class with no clear alphas um, at the NFL level, Hyatt is a guy that we have seen drafted high in the past. And I, I don't think it's a Henry Rugg situation because I don't believe there is the other players in the class that are deserving of that higher capital. I do see a world where Hyatt is, you know, a 20th, 22nd, 25th selection. We've seen this happen over and over and over in some of these mock drafts. So I think seeing him at 22 shouldn't be a surprise to anybody because we've seen kind of over the course of the past month or so, he's a top 25-ish talent in this class. It just kind of depends on where he ultimately ends up going. Yeah. Um, I, and let me say this about Hyatt. And uh, somebody in the chat, it was uh, Jay Vett. Hi, uh, no, it wasn't Jay. It was Cody. Shout out to Cody. Cody said Hyatt, uh, you know, NFL purposes, fantasy. I, I, Absolutely. Listen, there are teams that draft players because they fit a particular role for the team, right? And they draft a, a Hyatt. They draft a Tyler Scott because they fit a role in the offense to stretch the field, to open it up potentially for another receiver. So just because somebody gets drafted higher doesn't mean that that is the better asset for what we're looking for, right? For fantasy, there's a real world in which Hyatt could be an excellent... First of all, he could be an excellent receiver. We just don't know. He could be good for real yeah. life, and he could be good for fantasy. We don't know. But there is a world in which, you know, a team looks at him and says, listen, he's six foot, 185 pounds. He can fly. This is going to be a guy that unlocks my tight end, that unlocks the other wide receiver, that unlocks the running backs, and provides some big play opportunities. So I'm not going to say that he has no shot to be fantasy relevant. We don't know that. I I'll, I don't know if he's better NFL for for NFL or for fantasy. I don't know the answer to that question. But if what I do know is if he gets drafted inside the first round, what do I always say for fantasy? We're looking for players who have an opportunity to get an opportunity to score fantasy yep. points. That's all we can ask for, right? 
that's why you, you that's why you draft a first round wide receiver over maybe your favorite wide receiver that goes in round six because the opportunity that the higher drafted player gets is going to be probably superior to that than the lower guy. So we're looking for players who have an opportunity to get an opportunity to score as fantasy points. And if Hyatt is drafted as the second wide receiver, the first wide receiver off the board, he's going to have a shot, man. None of us really like Henry Ruggs, um, you know, when he was playing football. But going into that second season, it looked like they started to hey, he started to take his yeah. shots, right? Format matters, uh, roster construction, roster size, positional limits. All of that stuff matters. So it's hard to just make a blanket, oh, he's better for real NFL than fantasy. It, it kind of depends. We're, we're doing the trade show, Jay, and there's team, there, there's fantasy players that are playing in start eight leagues, start nine. Well, yeah, I don't really want them in that. But if you've got to start 12, if it's best ball, if you have to start three wide receivers, it, whatever the case may be, uh, that doesn't mean he's not going to be good for, uh, for fantasy purposes. All right, let's move down the board a little bit, and let's go to uh, – Let's go. The next player off of the board is a tight end, and we're going to go to Notre Dame. And for most people, this is the tight end one, Michael Mayer out of Notre Dame. Complete tight end. Complete tight end. Um, you know, is what about the speed though, Ray? Is he is he super athletic? No, he's not. He's not very athletic, uh, but he was able to win, and he was the predominant pass catcher at Notre Dame, damn near for three straight seasons. So. Again, he's going to get an opportunity, and he's going to be on the field constantly. So, uh, Michael Mayer. Now, I, I say all that, it, unless you're playing in leagues where you have to start two tight ends, uh, I'm not touching one with any significant capital. Can't, cannot do it. Even in even in a 1.5, that is not enough premium for me to um, – do you think Kyle Pitts taught us a lesson, Jay? I'm just, I'm just asking, do you think if we go back to 2021 – as good as he, I mean, me and Ryan Lopes, shout out Ryan Lopes, my guy Ryan Lopes, old yeah. Breakout Finder podcast. Uh, we were like, man, Kyle Pitts 101. You just take him early. He's a difference maker. I mean, if you if we go back to 2021, how high would you take Pitts over Najee, ETN, Lawrence, Fields? Uh, no. You're not taking him over Jamar Chase. Would you take him over Devontae Smith? No. Would you take him over Waddle? No. Okay. Right? I I I don't think he taught us a lesson. I just think he got really unlucky, right? Like I think yeah. the talent is there. He did get opportunities. He didn't do a ton with them. The target quality was not good because he could have been Evan Ingram. And I think that's that's the bigger case here. Evan Ingram had a phenomenal rookie season, hasn't been kind of good ever since. David Njoku turned out pretty good. Um, I kind of looked at that draft class when we had Njoku, Ingram, and uh, O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard obviously was terrible, but I think he could have easily had... I think you look at those three tight ends, all first round tight ends, and you see the range of outcomes for all three of those players. And it looks like Pitts kind of got the David and Joku, OJ Howard, and instead of the Evan Ingram end. I think the talent has always been there. And he still got a shot. I mean, the QB play, we'll see how it shakes out. Um, you know, I've talked about how I believe Drake London's gonna be the one in that offense, which isn't great for Pitts. But I just think it's just an unfortunate circumstance for a great talent. Um, we know he's got the talent, but yeah, yeah, we definitely overdrafted him if we're just reflecting a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree. Probably a little bit. All right. Costa Java, relax, please. Jesus Christ, man. Quentin Johnston is next. He is not. We are We are correct. Quentin Johnston is up next. QJ is 25th overall on Brugler's board. So he's mm -hmm. after uh, Jordan Addison. He's after Jalen Hyatt. Puts him, if we're doing this from a fantasy perspective, as the 10th best player for fantasy purposes. Quentin Johnson, the big receiver out of TCU. Listen, man. Um, fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Fool me three times. We can't get fooled again, damn it. Third time is a charm. Josh Doxton let us down. Jalen Rager let us down. Quentin Johnson will break the mold. I think, Jay... Don't I think this. he's going to be good. You don't like him. You're not a big Quentin Johnston fan. I, I'm saying you don't You don't have to. You can just abstain. You don't have to say he's going to be good. You don't have to say he's going to break think, the mold. You can just say, I think he's a good player, and I think he can do it at the NFL level. That's, that's all what I just you said. have to I say. think he could be. I think he's going to be. I think he's good. I think he's good. Is he? Do I feel a little safer with another receiver? Sure. But I don't think yeah. Quentin Johnson is bad at all. He's big. He's fast. He's good after the catch. Are there some things that we were not able to see on tape during his collegiate career? Absolutely. Probably. Because 
Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, are there things that he has to work on at the next level? Yeah, he does. I mean, he's you get physical with him. He struggles at times. There were a lot of plays in which he thrived off of broken plays. But you know what? Jalen Hyatt, he thrived off of being schemed <laughs> wide open. So I'm not about to praise Hyatt or 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 or, or and not Quentin Johnson for some of the, the 60-yard receptions that he had when it was broken plays. The same way we talk about talent and traits and tools from the quarterback position, there are talents and traits and tools at the wide receiver spot. And if you're telling me I'm getting a six foot three, 210, 215 pound wide receiver that can run four three, that has a 40 something inch vertical jump, and that is going to get drafted in a range where he's going to have an opportunity to get on the field and score me fantasy points, I want that guy. I'm not fading. Quentin Johnson, do I feel a tad bit safer with another receiver? If I'm if I'm looking at my roster and I'm like, you know what? I may not get the high-end upside here, but I just want a solid player, a solid receiver that the name value is going to carry weight in, in the dynasty world for trade bait. I, I feel confident that he can get on the field and catch the ball and score. Yeah, sure. Give me Jackson Smith and Jigba. But if I just want to say, damn it, I'm shooting for the moon and the stars I think Quentin Johnson is that bet, and uh, Brugler does have him as a top 25 player. So right after Quentin Johnson, we can just go right to the next receiver, literally uh, right off of the board after QJ, is Jackson Smith and Jigba, wide receiver um, from the Ohio State, making it inside the top 12. I love JSN, baby. I mean, we're doing a film breakdown on him tonight. I got some clips. Get I'm ready to unload on Twitter uh, for Jackson Smith and Jigba. Because, yeah, he may run out of the slot, but it's easy for him to create separation. He's smooth, man. He's a, he's he's big. He's a big – he's not a small slot, first of all. You look at him, you're like, all right, he's kind of big, man. JSN has got some size to him. Um, I talked to my uh, counterparts at the Draft Network who got to spend some time with him during the Super Bowl, and they're like, yeah, you can tell he's been in the gym. Uh, I love Jackson Smith and Jig, but I'm not overthinking it. I think a lot of people, he's out of sight, out of mind because he didn't do anything – Last year, um, but JSN is him. So I'm a big fan of JSN. Uh, Jay, you're not a big fan of QJ. You do like Jackson Smith and Jigba. What do you think about? Well, let's get the let's finish up the top 12 real quick, and then I'll get All your right. overall thoughts. All right, the final player, a uh, top 30 player on Dane's board that will round out our top 12. We're going back to the tight end pool. We're going to the West Coast. We're going to Oregon State and Luke Musgrave, who's been a massive riser. After his uh, freakish height and speed and athleticism that he put on display during the Senior Bowl. But Luke Musgrave coming off of the board as the 27th overall player in this uh, big board. Good player. So talk to us about that. those final three picks. Johnston, Njigba, and Musgrave. Yeah, I mean, I'll touch on Musgrave quickly, and it's it's no surprise to see him up here. I mean, we we both saw him live, and he was just big, even compared to other big, big tight ends. Um, so, and you just hear everyone just glowing reports about him. He can block, he can move really well, transition from being more of an athletic tight end to being a true inline blocking tight end. He kind of learned that at his time at Oregon state. So I think, you know, to your point, him being in the top 30 makes a ton of sense. <laughs> then you get into QJ versus JSN, right? And you talk about how, well, I'm not going to get sucked in again. He's going to break the mold. And it's just like on the very absolute surface, would I rather a TC wide receiver or a player who was way more productive out of Ohio State, taught by Brian Hartline, who has groomed countless wide receiver ones in the NFL. It's easy to take JSN, but to your point, Quentin Johnston could be that guy. It's really just, can he develop and can he turn into what DK Metcalf became when he got to the NFL level? And I think it's interesting, you know, you look at QJ and you look at Hyatt. Hyatt already does what you need him to do at an elite level versus QJ, who has similar skill set and similar speed size attributes but not quite at that elite level, but can he turn into that alpha? And that's the question that I think a lot of GMs are going to be struggling with is that he's the guy that you look at and say could be the alpha, but do you believe he can actually be that? Or would you rather take the safer player that you know can do things very well in Jalen Hyatt? I think that part is really interesting. But JSN, like you mentioned, elite slot receiver, um, a guy that I expect to have 100 targets in his rookie season. But outside of that, I think you, whether which one you want is interesting, but I would be taking JSN as well. I think it's pretty easy for me. All right, well, I'm excited for the film session, though, tonight. Yeah, Definitely, tonight, that's gonna be a good it's, one. it's some good stuff. I'm going to tweet some stuff out. So this is a big board. If you're jumping in late, this is not a mock. 
This is a big board. We're just listing the fantasy relevant players in the order in which they were in Dane Brugler's top 100. Top 12, Bryce, Bijan, CJ Stroud, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, Jordan Addison, Jameer Gibbs, Jalen Hyatt, Michael Mayer, Quentin Johnston, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and Luke Musgrave at 12. Let's keep it going because we've got a pair of tight ends that are coming off of the board uh, 29 and 30th overall. Darnell Washington, the massive tight end from Georgia coming off of the board as the 29th rated player on the big board. And Utah dynamic pass catching tight end Dalton Kincaid coming off of the board inside that at right at 30. So top 30 player for Dane Brugler right now. And I think uh, th this is the beautiful thing about this class is the tight end class is loaded, right? Yeah. I I, I like Michael Mayer. I don't love Michael Mayer. I like Michael Mayer a lot. I believe Michael Mayer is the tight end one in this class. But I don't have to draft him high because if I miss out on Mayer, I got a shot at Musgrave. If I don't get Musgrave, I'll take Darnell Washington. If I don't get Darnell Washington, I can get Dalton Kincaid. If I can't get Dalton Kincaid, there's Sam Laporta. There's Tucker Kraft. I mean, there are tons of tight ends in this class that you can backfill your roster in the fourth round of rookie draft. So... My wholesale advice right now, unless it is start two tight end, where where the premium of those players is up there with two QBs and super flex and super flex or two QB, I would just wait on tight end. You'll be able to get one. And I agree, um, Stephen Dalton Kincaid is a damn dog. He is a beast, man. He's recovering from some sort of surgery right now, so uh, we'll see how that works out. But let's have some fun here at forty four. So this would be the fifteenth rated player. On the board, uh, let's go. Let's go to the SEC and talk about one of the guys who's going to be a polarizing player, and we really want to see what his height and weight is, and we will get that here in a couple of days. But Texas A&M running back Devon A. Chain, and for some reason, people just don't. Oh, he's too small. He's too this. He's too that. He's got world class speed. He's an elite level sprinter. And it translates to the football field. A lot of times you get track guys that are track fast and not football fast. Devon A. Chain is both. He is both track fast and football fast. He produced in the SEC. Like it or not, he's going to get capital that people don't think he will. And he's going to get an opportunity to, uh, to produce in the NFL. And a player like A. Chain doesn't take much for him to crack you know, a game-changing type play. And this is that skill set and that ability to to create those explosive plays um, out of the backfield as a rusher and in the receiving game will yield uh, positive results for Devon A-Chain at 45, the 45th player on his board, uh, top, uh, top 20 for us for fantasy purposes, a receiver that I love um, because I, I just – I like guys that can do stuff after the catch. I, I, I do like yak monsters. Josh Downs can kind of do a little bit of everything. Wide receiver from North Carolina, probably going to provide instant special teams ability from a punt return and kick return standpoint. Uh, we'll probably have to work his way on the field, but I can definitely see Josh Downs turning into a, a slot plus that uh, yields positive results for us in fantasy. Now, let's have a little conversation here because none of us know anything about this kid, but... He continues to pop up inside of everybody's top 50, and I mean everybody, so we have to pay attention. Tyler Scott, wide receiver out of Cincinnati, top 50 player on Dane's board. Uh, speed for days. I know we're talking about A-chain speed and um, Keaton Mitchell from ECU, but Tyler Scott, he's he's right there with that fast track in Indy for being the fastest player uh, during, during the combine. Tyler Scott, don't know a ton about him, you know, I don't know a lot about Tyler Scott uh, besides uh, YouTube scouting highlights. That's all I've seen. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he can run. He's fast. Um, but that's about all I have for Tyler Scott. And we'll round out the top 50 with Tucker Craft, Jay. So Tucker Craft, again, another damn tight end. Tucker Craft out of South Dakota, top 20 player for fantasy purposes, according to Dane. Why take Mayer at the back of the first when you can get Tucker Craft at the back of the third, right? So... Talk to us about that cluster of um, A Chain down Scott and Kraft, Jay. Uh, you know, I've been a big fan of A Chain and kind of what we've seen from him. And I think, you know, like Dane kind of points out that his rare acceleration and burst is really why he's going to get drafted, regardless of how you may feel about his size. His traits are just at such a high level that you want to bet on them. I think to your point about downs, 
What I love to see from Downs is that I think he's going to be more of a red zone threat than people will expect for someone his size. And that's kind of a weird thing to say because he's only like 5'10", but I think he just has that suddenness in the red zone that he can get in and out of breaks quickly and create that separation that you want to see. Um, and then to your point about Scott, he gets, I mean, Brugler has him comped to, as Tyler Lockett. And apparently he was a running back and track star in high school. So again, that's where the speed comes from, right? But you think about those running back traits in high school, converting to wide receiver, a guy that can do things in, in the short area, screen game, reverses, all that kind of fun stuff that we like to see that can create big plays in fantasy. Tyler Scott seems to be able to do that. So I'm interested to see kind of how he looks. And even Dane says in his in his article that he's one of his guys in this class. Really? So he's he's yeah, firm. Yeah, he said he's one of my guys in this year's draft class, but his and his suddenness in the short area to complete to create separation are the treats treat traits sorry that make him believe and he's still 5'11 185 if he comes in at that height and weight, which really isn't bad. You know, people like these big receivers, but a lot of the alphas in the NFL, not to say it's going to be an alpha, but a lot of the alphas are only like 6'1". So the difference between a 6'1 receiver, 5'11", not crazy. And when you have the speed to burn, you definitely have the ability to work and operate oh as a wide receiver too. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. We're talking, Ray, are we talking about guys who aren't in the top 100 right now? We can't, we're not even going to talk about, was, we're not talking about players who are not inside the top 100. So unfortunately, fantasy Sean lovers, uh, there will be no Sean Tucker conversation today because he is not within the top 100. Well, let's keep it rolling. We got some time. Let's go to the 19th player uh, for fantasy purposes and number 55 on Dane's board right now. We're going back to the wide receiver pool. You see us over here at Draft Network. We've got him at 39. Zay Flowers out of Boston College. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, a lot of comparisons to old Antonio Brown here from a yeah. from a skill from a skill set standpoint, I don't know anything about his personal life. I don't know anything about Zay Flowers' rap career. But from a football standpoint, there is a lot of conversation about Zay Flowers potentially being a first-round pick. So to see him off of the board right there, you know, 55 overall. What's that, back-end second-round pick in the NFL draft for Zay Flowers? Yeah, yep, I, I, I like me some Zay Flowers. So... Let's go again. More tight ends, Jay. Uh, the next player no. up and rounds out the top 20, Sam Laporta from uh, Iowa. Iowa. Tight end yeah. from I. Again, I think so somebody said it in the uh, in the chat a few minutes ago. Don't even draft a tight end. Just get one off waivers. Get one off waivers. Stash them because there are just so many of them in this class. But that's the top 20, Jay. We got uh, uh, Downs at A-Chain at 15, Downs at 16, Scott at 17, Kraft at 18, Zay Flowers at 19, and Sam Laporta at 20. And we got plenty of time. We're going to keep it rolling, Jay. But I want you to I want you to talk about Zay Flowers. Feels like a guy you're going to like a lot. I do like Zay Flowers. His yeah. movement skills, I know, yeah, I know his you ability gotta, in and out of breaks. Type, man. You, you do. I, I like receivers that can separate, separate. are shifty. Um, again, off the line, he's great as well. Looks great in the Shrine game. I thought it'd be a little bit higher because you look at this list and it's, it looks like it is somewhat impacted by the Shrine game and by the Senior Bowl. And you kind of see that if you know all the players that were at those events. And Zay Flowers did look really good at the Shrine game. A lot of people said he was the best receiver there. Now, that's not saying a ton because like next on that list was basically A.T. Perry. But to your point, a lot of people have mocked Zay Flowers as potentially a first round pick. Now, Dane is a little bit lower on him than most. But, you know, it sounds like top two rounds is very much in his range of outcomes. And at that point, he's a guy that we want in fantasy. And I think that's important. And if he does go back to the second round, Ray, he's probably going to a pretty good team with a good quarterback. So you think about guys that could be risers in the draft process. It's pretty easy to see a guy like Zay Flowers go in the back of the second that you want to draft in the first round in fantasy because he's tied to a good quarterback. All right. 21. Going running back. A lot Thank of people goodness. like this player, man. A lot of people like him. He's big. He's fast. He can catch the ball. Uh, he has the high school pedigree, big Zach Charbonnet as a uh, you know top seventy pick, and I, I do believe that what we're going to see come the NFL draft is everybody knows this running back class is deep. If we know it, the NFL knows it, the teams know it. I think Bijan's going to get first round capital. I do not believe he's going number ten overall. I don't think he's going to be a top ten pick. I think NFL teams are a little smarter than that. But if he drops to like the twenties, right, which and still, this is not a Bijan indictment, but if he drops, what it's going to do is it's going to push all the other running backs down. And I think yeah. because there are so... The beautiful thing about this running back class, Jay, is 
every type of running back that an NFL team could want is in this class. And there's a bunch of them, right? It's not just like one or two or, you know, you have the complete total all around running backs, right? That can do a little bit of everything. And that's highlighted by Bijan Robinson. You have the dynamic pass catching weapons. You've got Jameer Gibbs. You have a Deuce Vaughn. You have a Kenny McIntosh. You have these running backs that that is their superpower, their ability to win and thrive as a weapon. Remember, I always say there's a difference between running backs that can catch passes and running backs that can be deployed as pass catching weapons. You have multiple pass catching weapons in this class. If you already have that and you're looking for a thumper, a guy that can hit up the middle, that can take those early down work, you have the Zach Charbonnets, the Zach Evans, the Chris Rodriguez's, the Mo Ibrahims. You have those guys in this class, right? If you just want the speed guys, I just want someone that I can pitch it to, they can turn around and run fast. You got Tucker, you have a Chase Brown, you have a, a Devon A-Chain, you've got a top... There's every type of running back that an NFL team could want or desire is in this class, and there's a bunch of them. So... I envision there's going to be a big cluster of backs that are selected round three to round five, and they're all going to be within similar striking distance of one another. So it's going to be really difficult to have clear tier break lines because I believe they're all just going to be jumbled together, right? You see Zach Charbonnet come off the board. Ten picks later, here comes Tajay Spears. Five picks later is Zach Evans. Seven picks later is Chase Brown. Two picks later, it's Kenny McIntosh. I think you're just... It's going to be crazy, but it's going to be crazy because it's filled with so many good players. And Tank Bigsby comes off of the board uh, for Dane right after Charbonnet. Literally, uh, uh, what is it, six slots after Zach Charbonnet? So Tank Bigsby. At one point in time, for those of y'all who have been around long enough, the conversation two years ago was between B. John Robinson and Tank Bigsby, sort of who's the RB1 in that 2023 class. Just crazy to see how that has gone. 72 off of the board for Dan. We might actually get through all 100. We'll see. Jaden Reed, who I love him. I've been a fan of Jaden Reed for quite some time now, but he seemed to really get on people's radar after the Senior Bowl. Again, another one of those players who probably walks in to an NFL team and is a dynamic returner from day one, making his hay on special teams followed by another SEC wide receiver, the other Tennessee wide receiver, the one that a lot of people thought would be the leader in that receiving room this season. Unfortunately, he dealt with a little bit of an injury, so Tillman never really got to get off of the ground, but you go look at what he did the year before last, and he was really good. And then finally, rounding out the 25, a player that we haven't talked a ton about. You see over here at the Draft Network, have, have they have this player uh, at 148 overall on the big board, Parker Barry. Washington out of Penn State. So, Jay, 21, Zach Charbonnet, Tank Bigsby, Jaden Reed, Cedric Tillman, Parker Washington. Talk to me. I think you made a really good point about those RBs, right? It feels like the NFL is just going to play chicken with those guys. But once you see a Charbonnet go off, a Kenny McIntosh, Tank Bigsby, maybe even Devon A. Chain, I think that's when that run could start to come, right? But to your point about the about those two guys in particular, I'm a big Tank Bigsby guy. I think he could be a great, a great two-down running back, can potentially be a three-down back. And obviously, Zach Charbonnet, I've talked about how once you get to A-chain land, I believe he's right there with him and one of the most complete backs in the class. So if he's a third-round pick, I'm more than happy to take him You know, in the first round, assuming landing spot is pretty solid for him. Tillman, I think, is interesting. I kind of want to watch his tape a bit more to see... Because he's not a bad receiver. He got hurt this year, and I'm not going to knock him too much for that, but he's still not rated overly high in some of these big boards. And so clearly there are deficiencies in his game versus a guy like Jaden Reed, where I think I saw what he does well and what he doesn't do well at the Senior Bowl, right? He was clearly one of the best receivers there. His speed is effortless. He's pretty solid in and out of breaks. Like I think we saw a lot of good things from him, and I could see why a team would like him to potentially be the returner and slot receiver. Does that mean I want him for fantasy? Not necessarily, but I think I saw the talent there as to why he will be successful in the NFL. And then Parker Washington's a bit of a wild card because the production, it was okay. We expected more from him this season. Now, I'm not going to blame him too much because his quarterback was awful, but it is good to see some people putting some respect on him because he was highly touted at times last offseason, but now he seems to be a little bit more buried with this receiver class. And the receiver class as, as a whole isn't great. I don't think we're going to draft a ton of them in fantasy, but Parker Washington could be a guy that does have a bit of a rise through the through in the NFL ranks because he can be a solid player. I mean, he's still 5'10 five, five, and 2'10, Ray. If he comes in at 2'10... Parker Washington is 2'10? 
He's listed at two. T- so that's what I'm saying. Like, Whew. I never, I never really viewed him as a serious Whew. outside there. But if you're two ten and you run pretty fast, that's that's something, man. Whew. That's that's a big, big, big receiver. So like that, Cedric Tillman, six three two fourteen, but Parker Washington five ten two ten. Assuming Par- he comes in at that weight, we'll see though. Parker Washington, damn near the same size, the <laughs> same weight as the next player we're going to talk about. And he, I, I'm just telling you. I, I don't buy the Senior Bowl's height and weight because I think Roshan Johnson's official height was like six foot, 220. He looked bigger than that. He was huge, he was big. Jay. Yeah. I mean, you were big. there. You saw him in Mobile. He was huge. Um, Roshan Johnson coming off the board is the 78th best player on the big board and 26 overall for fantasy. Here's what I'll say about Roshan. And... Let me think of the game. Um, I believe it was the Iowa State game. I believe it was Iowa State. If you want to watch a clinic on just protecting your quarterback from the running back position, it was a master class. Roshan Johnson is, I'm going to call him like the garbage man, right? He does all the dirty work. And that's not it. That's no. If you play football, that's not a, that's not a derogatory term at all. He does all the stuff that other running backs don't want to do. He's blocking for his quarterback, protecting him in third downs. He's blocking for Bijan Robinson constantly. When he gets his number called, he normally makes some plays. He's he's fast. He's explosive. He's got a little bit of wiggle to his game. He can catch the ball. He plays on special teams. He does all the dirty stuff that most players don't want to do. He's a good player. And this is why he's probably going to be drafted inside of uh, day two. And it's going to be for a lot of things that he does in conjunction with his ability to run the ball. Do I think that Roshan Johnson is going to walk into the NFL and they're going to be like, that's our starting running back? No. But I do believe he's the type of running back that an NFL franchise could say, I trust this young man. You hear all the things about his leadership ability. And reminds me kind of like, you know, Jamal Williams' leadership is Roshan Johnson. He can't. The way that he carried himself, and and I know these are little micro data points, but you go into this big room, Jay, of and you were there, of all these players, and you see the ones that are just kind of like off to the side, and maybe they just got a low-key personality, right? Yeah. Roshan walked, like he just, he had a commanding presence to him in a room full of other young men. And you can just yeah. tell this dude is, is, is more mature. He's a little different than some of these other guys. So I'm excited for Roshan Johnson. I want my favorite team to draft Roshan Johnson. Do I think he's going to be some superstar for fantasy? No, but he's going to be on the field, and I think he's going to be an asset that we want. I like Roshan Johnson. He does he does all the dirty stuff that a lot of players don't want to do. I'm a big fan of Roshan Johnson. Uh, another senior bowl standout who comes off the board, according to uh, Brugler, right after Roshan. Two two slots later, he's a top 80 player. He's number 80 on the big board. Tajay Spears. And I don't need to continue to talk about how impressive he was in Mobile. What, what I'm excited about, Jay, is there are a lot of other people who feel the same way about Tajay Spears. So another one of those dynamic type running backs, I think he's a little bit of a do-it-all guy at 205 pounds, right? At 200, came in at 204. Don't know if he bulked up uh, for the Senior Bowl or if that's... Yeah, they had him listed at 195 and he comes in at 204 that's, and doesn't lose any speed. That's impressive, man. Tajay Spears. And then the final Senior Bowl standout, number 28 on our board. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to be fooled again, damn it. I don't care. I'm in. Tank Dell. Prisoner of the I moment. Want him. I don't care. Prisoner of the moment. He I don't care. So Call me what you want. Prisoner of the moment. Um, uh, senior bowl overreactor. All I know is you look at Tank Dell's production numbers at Houston. Don't miss yeah. me with the two two Atwell comps. He is head and shoulders a better wide receiver prospect than two two Atwell was. He's gonna run fast. People were scared to cover him. I'm standing right there on the field, and the Carolina Panthers DB coach is like, "Hey, somebody get up here and guard." They didn't want to deal with it. They were like, "I don't want to guard him." Because I don't want him to make me look stupid in front of NFL GMs and scouts. R- Rajon Wright, shout out to Rajon. That's my dude. Rajon was struggling. Uh, day, day, he was tired uh, on Wednesday. But that's Rajon Wright from Oregon State was like, I'll go up there and try to guard him. But p- 
people didn't want them Tank Dell problems. So in an in an NFL where it it is it ain't no um big man's game. It's speed, it's separation, it's suddenness. I will have Tank Dell shares. I participate in almost 95% of my dynasty leagues are best ball. I don't do lineups. So I don't ever have to worry about when I got to start Tank Dell. In a best ball format, I will have a lot of Tank Dell. I like him, Jay. Talk to us, Roshan, Spears, Tank Dell, the three senior bowl standouts. Uh, so I did want to point out this because I don't know if we ever talked about it or people missed it, but I don't know if he's going to compete in the combine. I'm still waiting. I was doing some research while you were talking about it because he did break his hand, right? He, that's people, yeah. if they missed that story, yeah. he broke his hand on day one. But he finished practice. Like yeah. He didn't miss any time, which was wild. The next day, we see him in person at the uh, media availability, and this dude's got a full cast on his hand. We're like, dude, what happened? But, you know, Ian Rappaport broke the story earlier in the day. Um, but, yeah, his compete level, the way he looked with a broken hand is just ridiculous. Tajay, like you mentioned, I mean, we've seen all the clips on Twitter. He was the best running back at, at senior bowl practices. I don't even know if he played in the game. I think he had, like, one carry in the game. We don't care about the game anyways. But he looked great catching the ball running the ball and and it wasn't just that like there was holes for him he was making the plays himself and guys just cannot cannot touch him overall and tank dell like you said every photo every video i have of tank dell dude has five yards of separation whether it's on darius rush rajon Wright, did not matter who it was dude was getting open and it wasn't just running past guys it was effectively running his routes great at the top of the route great 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 off the line which i think will be great for him and then as you mentioned he also has return upside as well so there's a lot of reasons to take him pretty high so at 86 i don't think it's crazy in the third round if tank gets drafted there over some of the other receivers i really like I have no reason why I wouldn't take him in a third round in some rookie drafts potentially. And there's going to be, there's be drafts where he slips even further than that. People will remember the senior bowl stuff, but I think by the time the draft actually comes around, people will forget about it a little bit. But I'll remember what we saw and what we saw from the playmaker that is Tank Dell. I think he could do something at the NFL level. Yep, I, I completely agree. We'll, uh, we'll stop it at 30 and we'll just talk about a couple of players after this. Zach Evans is number... 87 on his big board, and then Eric Gray, 89 on his big board. I was impressed with Eric Gray. I know you were loved as well. Loved Eric Gray. Yeah, Eric Gray was a player that, man, I, I loved at Tennessee. I thought he was going to smash his first year at Oklahoma. Didn't quite work out that way for him, so we kind of forgot about him this season, and he smashed quietly. Nobody's really talking about Gray, but reality is I think he's a day three running back. Somebody that I'll have rostered, I'll draft in the fourth round but not expecting Eric Gray to come in and command any significant work early, but I do like the player. Zach Evans. Um, you can stat me to death. You can give me all the advanced metrics that you want to try to make that one work. I'm just, Jay, Dynasty Barry, you were in the film session. Um, Patrick, you were there. Who else in the building was there for that one? Uh, Lindsey Mack, I think you saw it. Listen, Cody, I know you saw I just don't see it, Jay. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to like him because I liked him at certain points during my Devi, uh, you know, when I was rostering him the a Devi year days. ago, two years ago. I don't, I don't know, Jay. This is one where I probably won't have much Zach Evans because the reality is the community – Likes him a Loves lot him. more than I do, and I will gladly let him have him. I think he's a two-down grinder. He's explosive. There's no doubt about it. He's big. He can run. But when I say zero creativity, zero lateral movement skills, he's a liability on third downs, whether that's standing in there and protecting his quarterback, ole blocks, or trying to catch the ball to backfield. You can advance metric me to death, but I'm not I, – I trust what I'm seeing – He's a running back, and I know people will like him, so I will draft him, right? I probably won't have a lot, but I will draft him with full intentions to trade him to somebody else. And I think because the community loves him so much, he's going to have tremendous value, even though I don't think he's that particular good of a player. Um, he's big and he's he could a be hammer. Like a, think he'd be like a Daryl Henderson type? <sighs> when, he's got, when he's got the lane, he can, yeah, he can that's break through it, good right? One. That's right when he when he has one. he's he's a more talented version of Daryl Henderson because Daryl Henderson played in Memphis. I don't know if he's gonna be as fast as him. I don't know what his time was, but I know that Hendo was really fast. Yeah, Hendo has catch, pass catching ability, which he showed. Zach Evans could maybe get there, but yeah, when Henderson had the lane at Memphis, he was gone. And I think Zach Evans can do that. Right when he doesn't, he doesn't necessarily know 
what to do to create space. Hey, you talk about break tackles in the hole. Slamming into the back of people. I mean, he is going to slam into the back of receivers in the open field. Ty DeClaire called him a moving pylon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's the top 30. Uh, the, the, the rest of the uh, big board, we had A.T. Perry at 91. Kendra Miller at 92. Love Kendra, but the reality is he's probably a late day two at best. Um, early day three running back, which is fine because I think there's going to be a lot of them. Xavier Hutchinson at 97. And Luke Shoemaker, another tight end here at 100. Jay, notable names that we did not call today. Chase Brown, Deuce Vaughn, Sean Tucker, Sean Tucker, Marvin Mims, Israel Abanacanda, Israel Abanacanda, Kenny McIntosh. Yep. I like we'll him. See. It's and it's early, right? It's February fifteenth. I do believe that for most NFL draft prognosticators, analysts, fantasy analysts. After the combine, things will shift around a bunch, right? Things will shift. Oh, yeah. around. Zach Evans goes out there and runs a four-two. He's going to fly up. The Mims yeah. is going to fly up. I get it, but we're just we're looking at the information as presented today, right? Today, um, yeah. A lot of these guys that we love, I see people. Oh man, Sean Tucker's a beat. This is why I draft. This is why I would draft Sean Tucker today, because there are people out there who think like you know he's it, he's this dude. And I'll draft him and trade him to you in a heartbeat. And I do think he'll be a riser because he's going to run fast. So we'll see. It's it's interesting. We'll save this board. We will actually save this uh, fantasy big board and we'll compare it moving forward. Um, Jay, any surprises for you? How are you feeling about uh, old Brugler's uh, fantasy players here? I'm not entirely surprised because remember when we looked at his uh, previous mock draft, it kind of makes sense. I think I think the biggest surprise for me is just seeing a guy like a Rich up there that high. Not that I don't think he deserves to be, but this is a this is a big board based off of talent, not based off of draft fit and need. And Bruger right. is saying he deserves to be a top 15 player in the NFL, and and you don't always see that with some of these mocks. Last year, if you recall, quarterbacks were being mocked in the top five, top 10. Yeah. But on the big boards, they, they were, were like, like down yes. in the 40s, 50s, 60s. So this is this is what I'm saying. There's a big difference here. When you see these players that are on the big boards high, that means that there's a very, very, very good chance they're drafted high. And for a player like A. Rich, people who don't believe can be drafted in the top 15, Dane Burgo is saying he deserves to be there and probably will be there. And so you have to adjust accordingly. We had four quarterbacks and B. John Robinson. That should be your top five. That's the top five in this big board. That should be the top five in rookie drafts. Yeah, no um, no Chris Rodriguez, no Evan Hull. Yeah. It's um, it's interesting, man. It's interesting. So again, uh, for Dane's full big board, go to the link in the description. Check that out on The Athletic. It's going to be fun. I'm excited for, Jay, I am excited for uh, for the combine to get some more information. Yeah. But again, l listen, we're, we're, we're fluid, right? We're going to be fluid this draft season. Let's just let's just react with new information. Joe, I saw you make a comment uh, about Tutu Atwell and, and thinking that he can still succeed. I think so, too. Like, is he going to be some consistent 100-catch receiver? No. But can he have plays and, and succeed in the NFL? I I think so, right? I, I think so. I just think the game is changing. Everything is different. You don't see 260-pound Mike linebackers like Rolando McClain and Brian Urlacher anymore. Like, the game is changing. It's a fast-paced game. Base sets are three wide receivers most of the time, so you're getting different types of guys on the field. Win quick, get the ball out quickly. And I think a lot of these players can succeed. And more importantly, I continue to say, don't let people tell you that this is a bad class. Don't let people tell you that. It may not be littered with the Chases and the Waddles and the Smiths and the ETNs and the Harrises of the world. But you're telling me I can get a Tajay Spears in the third, Roshan Johnson in the late second, Bigsby in the third, Charbonnet in the second, and be able to contribute to my fantasy roster? This is a good class. I can get tight ends off waivers. They have a chance to potentially start or get opportunity in the NFL. It's a good class. It's a very good class. So yeah. there it is. A big board update on this Wednesday, hump day. Appreciate y'all tapping in to, uh, to this episode of Wake Up. I uh, appreciate y'all tapping into everything that we've done this past week. Jay, anything you want to say to people before we get out of here? 
Film session tonight. JSN, baby. Patreon.com forward slash all gas. Let's get it. It'll be fun. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Film session tonight. It's going to be a good one. I'm going to clip some stuff too and throw it on Twitter. So if you're here, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, like the content. Make sure you subscribe to the Destination Devi radio feed. Off the Line Fantasy, 4D Chess, America's Game. Me, Scott Connor, and Eric Vanek going to record a monster pod. I'm not looking forward to it because it's probably going to be like two hours long, but let's do it, damn it. Let's ride. Uh, Destination Dynasty with Scott Connor. We do have one super chat question, and that was uh, sort of what I'm going to get to with Scott. So thank you for this one, Jose. Uh, I always love the content. When are you gentlemen doing a cut candidate show for roster cloggers? I low-key need that. Thank you for the super chat. We will do it. I will get Scott to get that oh, on God. the Destination Dynasty um, uh, uh, docket, the queue, the agenda, because Jose, my man Scott, there's nothing he despises more than roster cloggers. So we'll have Scott do a roster clogger show. Uh, subscribe to the free newsletter below. And uh, one of our partners, man, y'all know what it is, Epson. Go to the link in the description and check out the beautiful Epson Epic Vision Ultra LS800 short throw projector that came to the crib, hooked me up for the Frizo. And uh, I'm telling you right now, I will not go back to any other uh, type of projecting TV experience for my media room moving forward. This thing is beautiful. It's quiet. I love it. The kids love it. My wife loves it. Uh, Eugene from Off the Line Fantasy, he loved it. His unborn child who came over with uh, his beautiful wife, even he loved it through the womb. He was like, man, this Epson is dope. So appreciate y'all being here. I love y'all. And you know what? For all of you out there that make fun of my outro in the hat, this is the last episode that you will see the hat on the outro. I'm recording a new one because I'm sick of y'all making fun of me. My feelings get hurt. Check out the Dynasty Trade Show on the channel. I got a film session dropping on YouTube. We got prop videos all the time. I did it all. We're out of this thing. Y'all have a good one. See you on Monday. I'm out. Peace. Thank y'all for watching the Wake Up Show with myself and Jay Rich. If you finished the show and you're still hanging around and have yet to hit the thumbs up button or subscribe to the channel, do that right now and turn them alerts on while you're at it. If you want more exclusive access to me, Jay Rich, or the entire Destination Debbie team, patreon.com forward slash all gas gives you that access. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter for free 99 content. And if you want to get in on that action, use the promo code wake up over on prize picks for a hundred percent deposit match up to $100 for first time users and a brand new show dropping on the Mojo YouTube channel. Myself and Jay Rich will be talking about these players and their value from a stock market perspective every single week this fall over on Mojo. It's all gas, all the time. Love y'all. I'm out of this thing. Peace.